Rob and Slim Show. Hey, it's uh, John Cancel here calling in. John, John Cancel, how you doing, dude? Actor and comedian from Philly, correct? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, we got yeah. you, dude. We're live. We got you on, and you're 22 years young, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. You open with that. That's great. <laughs> oh man, how long have you been doing comedy for? Uh, you know, I don't want to think about it, but I. Uh... How much is like 1990? Wow. Oh, wow. that's um, that's good. Yeah, since I was like 12. <laughs> <laughs> but man, you've you've written for Jay Leno, you've written for Joan Rivers, you've been on Comedy Central, Good Morning America, like you've done a lot. You've done a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, when I first started comedy, this is before the uh, alternative, if you call if you call it that, comedy took over. Uh, like I really fell in love with it, and I started uh, writing jokes all the time and, and submitting and submitting them to like radio DJs, morning zoo type guys. Yeah, uh, and I had a friend who told me about uh, he had a fax number to send jokes to Leno, and uh, oh, so I started wow. faxing jokes to Leno, and he bought a couple uh, oh, wow. for, for fifty bucks. <laughs> I was going to ask, how do you how do you get that kind of a gig? Do you have to audition? Like, how does that work? No, you would send in you would send in about ten topical jokes uh, a day, and he had his own writers. But it is a burden for those guys. And this is uh, this is years ago. And if he liked it, if he used it, he would. Uh, he, he's pretty pretty on the up and up. He, so he'd give you fifty, send you a check for fifty bucks from NBC Tonight Show with Joe Leno. Wow! But then uh, there was a writer strike, and. Uh, you couldn't submit anymore unless you like grandfathered in, like new people couldn't do it. And it was a bit of a pain in the ass because you had to write jokes Leno style, not something that you would do yourself on stage. Oh, wow. Like, uh, like you know, like, you know, Leno jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, uh, but, uh, and then, uh, uh, the same service used to send things. This is when Joan Rivers had a talk show on during the day. And okay. uh, it's, it's it's not that easy to try and write in someone's voice. Yeah. Uh, like, you, know, you, know, you know, Joan Rivers would say something differently than Jay Leno. Mm. Uh, but uh, that's when I was a kid starting out. Um, and I would submit things like morning zoo guys across the country. And, and, and everything was just topical. And uh, the only thing I really got out of it, though, it teach you how to be a, a topical monologist right like right for topical people yeah just be versatile I, I like that though that's a cool that's a cool thing to know um and uh by the way too if there's any young up and coming comedians out there listening on the you know your super show uh and you go oh I, I have a uh, what do you call it a writer's block I can't write anything you just buy just buy a, a, an issue of like USA Today and get a notepad and just write down topical jokes of things you can think about like what happened today Cool. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask you what kind of advice you would give to somebody just starting out. Would, would it be that? Uh, yeah, that. And if you go to an open mic night and you bomb out, and you're like, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, you keep coming back. No one cares. No one's keeping score. You yeah. Know? Uh, one way, no, there's a couple of idiots that do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that who keeps score. Oh. Uh, but... but uh, yeah, uh, always keep a notepad in your pocket or an index card. Just write down everything you can think of. Yeah. I, uh, it, it really sucks big time if you think of something really funny. Like, I'm sure you think of something funny. Like, this would be great for our, our podcast. And then you forget about it. And now they're like, you're like, damn it. What? I you do what you said, down. John. I keep paper in my pocket all the time. All the time just to write <laughs> stuff down on. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I used to have a, uh, look like my man, look at my uh, Ted Kaczynski manifesto. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I, I used to have a bundle of index cards in my pocket uh, with my set list and things like I don't want to have set list. Well, I went to a Wawa convenience store one time and, I, and it fell in my pocket. And I just drove away. I could picture somebody finding it, like, "Oh, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> a diary." And the first joke says, "Like, uh, Colin Oscar be Christmas trees." 
<laughs> Dude, the other thing I do, the other thing I do, I have um in my phone. I don't even know what it is. It's like a draft. You could save a text as a draft, and it's just like some numbers. And once in a while, I've texted it. And yeah, I do a skit called "Too Many Rapes," and there's been some like rape <laughs> joke. I'm like, who is getting these texts? <laughs> then every now and then, instead of saving, I just hit send. Like I'm just. <laughs> yeah, I, I I got friends that uh, got their their uh, a good voice recording app on their iPhones. Oh. And I can't stand my Philadelphia accent. I'm like, oh my God, who's that talking right now? <laughs> How do you say bagel, John? Yeah, oh man. <laughs> wait, 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 again? You guys say bagel differently than we do. Uh, oh, bagels, eagles. Um, <laughs> eagles. Uh, you only hear my, my, my mom's got a really thick Philadelphia accent. She says, like, uh, uh, batteries, uh, Philadelphia eagles, water, hot dog. <laughs> Bagels, yeah, yeah. like yeah, like yeah. <laughs> the um, first time I heard the the Philly accent, I was like, oh boy, what is that? I I don't I um, don't I can't react to that. <laughs> I I had to do a show last week with a guy from Baltimore, and I thought my accent oh. stood out. He was like, uh, "Up that dirt road, it's going on there, you guys." There's this weird dude, yeah, Baltimore, <laughs> like yeah, there's just oh, oh. <laughs> <they're... laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, uh, right now I'm at, uh, uh, I had to pick up the prop comedian, the legendary wig, because uh, uh, November 1st is his favorite day of the year, legendary wig, because this is when all the Halloween adventure stores close up, and they throw all their uh, costumes that people <laughs> brought back in the trash in the dumpster. <laughs> Did you have to go dumpster diving? <laughs> Well, I'm right now. I'm, right now, I'm in South Philadelphia. I'm, I'm inside my truck while he's climbing through a dumpster. And so far, he got a, a Green Lantern. No, Green Lantern. Uh, what's the movie with Seth Rogen? Green. Oh, Green Hornet. Green Hornet. Yeah. Yeah. He got a Green Hornet. He got a Green Hornet hat and a, a Pope. Uh, poster. <laughs> Even where I work, where I work, we have the, we have Halloween costumes in one part, and you get a cart that's just mixed mixed stuff. Like I don't know, people try them on. There's just missing pieces. <laughs> you have like f- uh, fur patches and all sorts of stuff. Like you could do some crazy uh, things with the pieces. <laughs> oh my god! Um, I, I had to take Wit to the Goodwill store because he likes buying VHS tapes. They're four for a dollar. Yes, and they have all these leftover Halloween adventure stores. Uh, like, but they have costumes from like 10 years ago. Like the one I'm in, outside of right now in South Philly has a stack of Paul E. D. Wicks from the Jersey Shore Halloween costume. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Is there demand for the Paul E. D. Wig? <laughs> no, uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> they could probably just... They have a new label. It's called the Frankie, Aval- Frankie Avalon wig or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frankie Valley wig. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> What's the craziest thing, John, that's ever happened to you while performing stand-up? Oh, uh, hmm. Uh, one time I did a show in Delaware at a ground round, and uh, the guy brought me on stage, and I walked up on stage, and I tripped, and I fell flat on my face <sighs> and knocked over everything. And uh, um, and the audience didn't laugh. They're like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> and I, I, that was really embarrassing. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, well, I don't know. I I, I just, the show I just told you about. I worked with a guy from Baltimore last week. Uh, there was a seventy-two-year-old guy also on the show, and he stepped backwards, and the stage was about two feet from the wall, and he fell into the curtain, and he ripped it off the curtain rod. And it fell on top of him, and he had a. And he was a seventy-two-year-old man with a black curtain over his body, and he looked like an eighteen hundreds uh, photographer. <laughs> yeah, and, and he couldn't get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a. I was on a. I was at a show about a year and a half ago. Kind of a year, you know, yeah, a year and a half ago, and uh, there was a comedian on the show, very nice guy from Philly. He was six foot eight, weighed about three hundred and eighty pounds, and he. Uh, in the middle of his joke, he, he passed away. He collapsed right, right on the stage, oh. and it was at a, uh, 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 a was it, what was it? it was an Applebee's in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. Wow! And uh, it's not and, you know it's 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 like you smile now because this guy was like Paul Bunyan. He was gigantic. Yeah. And uh, and the people had to 
they, they, the EMTs came in and they, they had to walk around. This guy was gigantic. That was a crazy thing. Someone passed away on a show. Was like, wow, yes. Uh, um, what else? Uh, I've, I've seen people start fights before. Nothing with me, though. I was going to ask. I was going to ask if you ever got in a fight over a joke or uh, anything like that. Um, oh, uh, oh, yeah, I did. Um, I, I was at a, the Comedy Works one time, and I, have, I had some stupid joke about uh, I went to a go-go bar for flat-chested strippers called like a, oh God, <laughs> hard-boiled eggs or something, something stupid like that. <laughs> yeah. And how you, had, you couldn't put money between the breasts, you had to hand it to them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I get done my show and this real pretty woman goes up to me and she goes, uh, can I tell you something? I go, why? She said, I find what you said, making fun of flat-chested women, completely offensive. And, and, and you're, you're, rot, you're a rotten person for saying that. Wow. And I go, and then I said, well, you, all Canadians should say, you, you say this, you say this. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> that's not an apology. You say, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> and uh, then her freaking boyfriend comes over who looked like a magnificent Morocco from the ra- wrestling in the 80s. Yeah. And goes, is there a problem here? I go, no, she screamed at me because uh, she thought I was making fun of flat chested people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he goes, come on, let's go out of here. But uh, uh, I, I, I almost got into a fight. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but stuff like that. You know, it's, uh, you, you, you know, some of this stuff happens you forget about. I, I know some comedians that keep a journal. Yeah. Uh, like all insane stuff. Um, I've, uh, like, you know, like if you had, I used to have a joke about a uh, Shaking hands with a move it. it was like grabbing a handful of Tootsie Rolls on Halloween, like the little stubby fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say mention. Them. You can't say mention anymore. <laughs> they like right, little people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, so I, I mentioned that. I go, you can't call a midget a midget anymore. You want to be called dwarves, little people, yes. stumpy Americans. <laughs> and, I don't and, think... and the joke is that I call... <laughs> I call them what they are. <laughs> Keepers of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that. I don't think dwarf is any better. I don't think yeah, little no. people's any better than midget. I don't. Yeah. I really don't. <laughs> so, but I, I've told that joke before and you, 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 I scan out across the room and I saw a midget in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I have a really good friend who had a, a real funny joke about how he says, I, I never know how to come out on stage. So I'm running out. So I'm going to come out in a suit. Or so I come out on a surfboard, six midgets carrying me. <laughs> and it's funny, it's a laugh. Yeah. Well, he did that joke in Philadelphia, and on the show, Seinfeld, Kramer's friend was Marty the Midget, Mickey the Midget. Yes. Yeah, right. Well, he's from Philadelphia. Well, oh. his mom was in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and she found this comedian's uh, Facebook and email address and wrote him like a four page letter. Saying you shouldn't make fun of midgets carrying you on a surfboard, <laughs> and he, he was really mortified over it. <laughs> I got these midgets coming after me. <laughs> you know, she's upset over that. But I, the only time I see him, or son, the midget on a commercial on TV, is like some Santa Claus elf commercial, <laughs> or he's like stretching a giant hamburger for Burger King, like a crewman. <laughs> 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 You know, like he's complaining, like, oh, you shouldn't make fun of me. But meanwhile, he's like riding a hamster around on a pet show commercial. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what uh, what upcoming projects do you have going on, John? Um, oh, this is still in Jersey. Uh, it's on, it's a, it's out of Penns Grove or Pennsville, New Jersey. November 9th, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, course, I'm supposed to be on with the legendary wig. Next uh, Thursday night, next week, a week, you know, uh, uh, some New Jersey public access show. Oh, wow. Uh, that's coming up. Um, uh, I also do a podcast, too. Uh, on Thursdays, it's called the Passive Aggressive Hour. I did have that yeah. written down, and that's on LaughCast, correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a fun show. It's a nice little studio. It's kind of far, but we've been doing it for a couple of years. And it's just, I, to be honest with you, I hope you, you guys probably feel this way about your show. Like, it's the it's my highlight highlight of my week. Like, I I look forward to it. I yes. have more fun doing these than I do a, a stand up show. Yeah. Oh, you you have more fun doing doing your podcast. Yes, because That's cool. uh, it, 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 you know you're free form. You, you, you we'll discuss things like you're doing now. You, something comes up and you think and you think on your feet and you 
make a joke out of a current joke. But when you do a stand up set, you gotta you know, play by a, a, a skeleton. You know, you have a, you know, you're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, is it harder um, to do stand up compared to the podcast? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. To be, oh yeah, to be honest with you, and, and like I look forward more to the podcast because it's like joking around with your friends in high school. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. At the lunch table and laughing and yeah, uh, uh, that's what it is. But uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, in Bristol, Pennsylvania this week, and I'm at the Comedy Works Friday and Saturday uh, with the legendary Wid and this guy Frankie Pace. A very funny veteran comedian who looks just like Dan DeVito. Nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, at this weekend. Um, cool. And, uh, uh, what else? But that, that's it. You know, you, uh, the, the, my God, the years just fly by. I, I can't believe I just said 1990. Dude, uh, yeah, I, uh, I graduated in 95, so yeah, it's, it's a uh, while. You know, when I started in Philadelphia, it was kind of a, a really cool town because when I say... I uh, started in, in my group of people I started doing comedy with was uh, Paul F. Tompkins, uh, Todd Glass, uh, who else? Uh, Adam McKay, who directed Anchorman. Uh, who else? Uh, somebody else. But there's but these guys all went to California and became kind of you know prominent yeah. comedians and yeah. comedy and stuff. Uh, and uh, I used to sit back and, and uh, like I used to really enjoy it. those guys. All were original people and very very funny they all stood out mm. uh -huh. but then like a jerk i got a girlfriend i'm like eh, i'm stuck around the area <laughs> <laughs> and wound up, wound up driving a prop comic to a vfw hall in the pine barrens <laughs> <laughs> did he find any corn cob pipes I, I love i loved your joke about the corn cob pipes at 7-eleven Oh, that's a true story. Uh, <laughs> I guess think about how that happened. That. Uh, uh, oh well, the whole the first part was uh, when the lace was two eighty eight. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, I'll say this. I don't care. Uh, that guy Wid, uh, my the prop comedian friend, I always talk about. Yeah. Um, he 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 buys those corn cob pipes because he smokes pot out of them. <laughs> I had to do that a couple times in my twenties. Just yeah, we yeah, had nothing. We had to, we didn't have anything, so we needed we needed the corn cob pipe. <laughs> I like if he gets pulled by a cop, he just put on a pair of coveralls. Like, wait, you see my bloodhound? <laughs> and, uh, oh, and I, yeah, you know, I, oh, I'm sorry, John. What's that? Now, right where I'm, where I'm talking to you guys from, I'm in South Philly. Uh, there's a Burger King that's down there. It's, it's right off the Front Street exit. Exit. It's down by the stadiums, or where you see the football teams perform perform play and uh <laughs> there's a burger king here and it's like <laughs> it's like the bargain base and there's no lights on it and like I, there's some real nice burger kings i go to this place looks like a hellhole like a haunted prison it's just <laughs> awful <laughs> i'm looking at it now that there's cats running around outside <laughs> oh crap <laughs> Uh, you know, there's, there's no lights in the parking lot. It's next to a go go bar and an uh, excitement studio porno house. <laughs> and I'm looking right now at a stage right in the with two fat lesbians who are feeding feral cats. <laughs> feral cats and lesbos. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's in the first rule book of being a lesbian. <laughs> nice. I love too. I loved your joke. Why didn't they just shoot RoboCop in the mouth? Like that's oh, <laughs> that's, oh. that's amazing. <laughs> the bad guys. Why, why didn't they just do that? I love yeah. that joke. That, that, I used to open with that, or I used to open with. Can, can I curse in your guys' show? Yes, absolutely. Oh, I used to open with that, and I used to say, uh, if, uh, my other opening line was, you know, if I was friends with Spider Man, I would tell everybody his secret identity because you know. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just a little yeah, shit. Yeah. Just a little <laughs> shit, Spider-Man. <laughs> oh. Nice. Who are some of your favorite comedians? Um, oh, Dave Attell. Uh, I like, uh, Dave Attell makes me laugh like, consistently. Yeah. Uh, who else? I like Nick DiPaolo. Yes. Uh, um... Who else? Uh, I said Paul F. Tompkins. 
Uh, who else I, you know, I used to like? Uh, oh, you know it's weird too. I, I, I just want to talk about this. My God, did you ever watch some? Just at your home during the day, and you, and you start watching some comedians' videos from like HBO in the early '80s, and they suck. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, so uh, bad. there was one guy who, who, who made me laugh again today. Who I, I knew him a little bit. Uh, uh, he, uh, he passed away last year. Like Kevin Meany. Oh um, yes, yes. Uh, um, his his special still made me laugh because it was so frantic and funny. But yeah. uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, as a kid growing up, people say, "Who do I like?" I used to say, "Like Steve Martin." Mm. Uh, um, well, and, and just uh, Jonathan Winters. Uh, yeah. You know, I liked as a kid, little kid, uh, uh, like Robin Williams. I liked him for about a week, and I'm like, "Oh, I can't take this guy." <laughs> yeah, he was—he um, was all over the. He was crazy. He was crazy, Robin Williams. Um, who else? Uh, you know, it's neat too. Some people who they grew into being a, a really unique comedian, like Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah, like when he first started, he was that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, his later special was kind of really funny. Yeah, he dropped that voice and everything. <laughs> yeah. One of our friends moved out to California and, and works with him, uh, Jay McBride. She's a transgendered comedian, and she's she moved out to Cali from New York and just, I guess, instantly connected with him, and she she works with him now. Oh wow! Oh, good. He's a he uh, he became a director. He directed a couple of really funny movies. He, he directs Jimmy Kimmel's show once in a while. Wow! Um, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Um, and uh, but uh, yeah, he makes me laugh. Uh, um, but uh, who I, I can't really. It's some some people come and go. Like I'll, you know, it's me. Sometimes I'll put on the comedy channel on on on, on the ra- on the satellite radio, and I'll hear some people, and I, I'll start laughing, and I, and I don't know who it is. I don't tell you who it is. <laughs> um, I used to like um, Friday night. I think it was Friday night comics on Comedy Central, and it would just be up and comers. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I have a friend uh, who's very funny, but. Uh, he records all his open mic night sets on his iPhone, and he just mixed them all together and made a, a nice song a CD. Cool. Out of his open mic nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know if Comedy Central still does that. I, I, I don't even know where you go uh, to check out new comedians. It's been so long. So long. Um, oh, you know, every time I... I uh, I'm not taking away anything from anybody, but... Uh, it's always passed around Facebook in the comedy world of who got the new Netflix special or Comedy Central special. Yeah. And uh, and a lot of people are very funny, but uh, it looks like it's, uh, what do you call it, uh, being politically correct. Uh, it, it's like you're like a, a, a white guy, an Asian, a heavy set black girl, a gay guy, a straight guy. Or, you know, it looks mm. like the one, like they're, they're getting guess who? That's when you play as a little kid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to say I'm surprised when I'm an Eskimo and a Swedish guy fixing clocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be what it is. John, we have to wrap this up, dude, but thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, uh, you guys are the best. I really love your show. I love your tweets. Uh, you guys are great. Cool. Thank you, dude. Where can everybody find thank you? you for- uh, johncancel.com or on Facebook. Awesome, man. Oh, wait, 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 where can you find me? <laughs> In my mom's basement. <laughs> I, was, I thought you were going to say the Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> the Burger King, too. All right, guys, take care. You too, Later, brother. <laughs> Later, John. <laughs>